they want mom's nachos. So they are the ultimate nachos and kiddos, this is what you're gonna get. Um, this is just really fun. I love to set up a nacho bar and just let everybody help themselves. And that's just an easy way to go. That way you could be, if you're watching it at home, plant yourself on the couch and you won't miss a play because you don't have to get up every time somebody says, can I have some more of that? You just point to the, the kitchen island and say, it's all right there. So a sip of coffee and we're gonna get this Packers party started. And you got green and gold on? Totally, obviously. Good, go Pack, go. She does not wanna come over and watch the game though. She actually wants to, she says she needs to be watching that game alone. I'm like, come on over, we'll have people over. Nope, nope, she's gotta watch it in the privacy of her own house. So, all right, the ultimate game day nachos. We're starting out with some ground beef. And I like to make a nice big batch because you wanna have plenty of food. And sometimes, depending on how many people are coming over, you, you can even double or triple this recipe. And what I like to do is have this all done ahead of time and then park the nacho meat and the cheese sauce in slow cookers. So like I say, everybody can ladle on the cheese and the beef. And when it comes to nachos, I really like a cheese sauce. So that's what we're gonna make. And it starts out with just a whole bunch of Velveeta cheese, the processed cheese. And you can either melt it in a microwave or in a saucepan. If you're doing it in a saucepan, you wanna do it over very low heat. Heavy cream or milk, and just a little splash of that. And I'm using, Ann, will you open that for me? Because I'm no good at opening that. A little splash of heavy cream or milk and one can of Rotel tomatoes with the juice. This is gonna keep it nice and mild, just a little bit of tomato. And there's tomato in the Rotel tomatoes. Uh, it's canned tomatoes, a little lime juice and cilantro, so it's gonna give it some good flavor, but it's not gonna be spicy because I wanna keep this so that everyone's happy with mom's cheese sauce. Um, and the people who like it a little spicier can put on some jalapeno peppers and some other spicy stuff. That's, really That's why Ann's not coming over. Okay, she doesn't like it spicy. Well, I'd make it mild for you, Ann. So a little splash of our Lamer's cream and just Either you can actually set this in your slow cooker and let, turn it on low. You wanna make sure and do it on low and let it hang out and melt low and slow. So there's three ways you can do this. You can melt this in the microwave and then you wanna keep it warm and then put it in your slow cooker. You can do it in a saucepan and then put it in your slow cooker to keep it warm. Or you can just start right out and throw it in your slow cooker, which is normally the way I do it at home. This cheese stuff is a little bit picky and it will burn and you don't want it to do that. So. Um, you really need to melt it over low heat and stir it often. Okay, I'm gonna use the old chop and stir to break up our ground beef. And then I'm gonna start working on some of the toppings. So I hope everybody had a wonderful holiday season. Boy, it flew by, didn't it? And I have to thank everybody who came out to see me. At, I had lots of different holiday events speaking events and book signings and things like that. So a huge thank you for everybody who came out. And by the way, if you did get one of my cookbooks, I'd love to sign it for you. I'm actually gonna be before the big game at Festival Foods on the east side of Green Bay for a book signing Sunday morning from 11 to 12.30. It's gonna be really busy. Everybody going to stock up for their tailgate and at home game day party. So come on by, say hi and I'll be there. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, so my ground beef is, I just want it to be crumbly and no longer pink, which we're working on. Now I picked up some great green and gold chips and they had these right at festival. So these are really fun. Sometimes they'll take the time to actually warm them up put them on a cookie sheet and put them in the oven and it just kind of brings them back to life. Now if you've got it on, you know, these are yeah, on a nacho bar type of thing, you don't really need to do that. Just have them in a big basket because you do have warm melty cheese and the warm beef. Aren't those green and gold chips just so cute? I know for the holidays they did green and red chips. So we spent a little bit of holidays up at our cottage in, in Michigan, 
northern Michigan. I'm from a little town called Petoskey, Michigan. And we have a cottage not far from there, just about five, 10 miles from there in Petoskey, Michigan. And let me tell you, it was a winter wonderland up there. Both kids love to ski and snowmobile and all that kind of stuff. And uh, all the ski hills, for the first time in, since 1996, every single ski run was open in December. There was that much snow. All the sledding trails were open. It was just, and it, the snow just kept coming. It's right on Lake Michigan, so they got lots of lake effect snow, and it was absolutely beautiful. Yesterday was the first day back, and I think it was tough for a lot of people. We were back in the saddle, right, Ann? And uh, Ireland had her first day back at school. It was a long day, but we all made it. We had a big family dinner last night. Yeah, that was the nice part about it, though, is that we only had Thursday and today, and then we got the big game to look forward to, so we can handle that. Okay. I'm just really excited that I filled up my tank with gas yesterday, not today. I was getting kind of low, and I thought, you know what? The car's nice and warm. I'll go ahead and fill up yesterday on my way to work, and whew, good decision. Boy, it's going to be cold for this game. Wow. All right, one packet of taco seasoning. Where's my scissors? And then some water. All right, let that kind of hang out. Cheese is starting to melt. And then what I like to do is just have a whole bunch of different fun toppings. Because you never know what people like on their nachos. So I happen to love these sliced pickled jalapeno peppers. I, I, the more peppers, the better. Um, I also love doing some shredded lettuce. And these days, I'm a big fan of instead of using iceberg lettuce, you can still get that same crunch and use romaine lettuce. It's just so much better for you. So even in tacos and some of those, you know, recipes like this, not that nachos are healthy, because they're not, but they're just the ultimate game day food in my mind. Um, but anyway, we'll just add a little bit of nutrition to them with the romaine lettuce. Then we've got some scallions for that kind of hint of onion flavor without going overboard. And what do you like on your nachos? Cheese and meat. Cheese and meat. That's she's like my son Riley, who's home from college. He uh, he is a that's all keeps it pretty simple. Um, Me, I like the works with extra jalapenos. So this cheese is starting to melt really nicely. If you do like it a little more spicy, they actually make a Mexican blend Velveeta cheese. And it's not too spicy, but it's just got a little bit more kick to it. Like I say, you know, there's a lot of kids at these football parties. The kids are just as excited, if not more so, than the adults about the Packers being in the playoffs. Um, and, you know, I'd like to keep uh, the buffet or whatever I'm serving really kid-friendly, too, and uh, so keep it nice and mild and then put the hot stuff on the side for people to add as they like. All right, we're ready to start putting this party together. So I always like to start with lots of the meat and the cheese. It's fantastic. We watched the last game in Michigan at our cottage. We don't have any TV, so we went out to a place to watch the game. And uh, we were the only, the only Packers fans there. And most of the people at this restaurant weren't there really to watch the game. 
and they heard us screaming and hooting and hollering, and I think they thought somebody was something was happening. But then all of a sudden we got the attention of everybody else, and the whole place started watching the game. So we left there with a lot of new friends. That was an exciting game, crazy. So I usually start with the cheese sauce. And then I throw on some of the beef. And if you wanted to lighten it up a little bit, you could use ground turkey instead of ground beef. And that's still going to taste fantastic, especially in a recipe like this. That taco seasoning adds so much great flavor, you're really not going to know much of a difference between the beef and the turkey. In fact, Ann loves ground turkey and ground chicken. Don't you, Ann? I do. Okay, now we're going to get a little fun. So we're going to take some lettuce. We'll do some shredded lettuce. Nice big dollop. I like to do sour cream. If I'm making a big tray of this, I like to do it kind of right in the middle, and that's how they do it at the restaurants, so that people who like sour cream can, they know where to find it. Lots of black olives. And this is one of the reasons I like making nachos at home and doing a nacho bar, is because sometimes when you order them at the restaurant, by the time the plate gets to you, the cheese is a little bit cold, and man, for me, nachos just have to be just really hot and, you know, ooey and gooey and cheesy and melty and all that stuff. Diced tomato, and then for me, we'll just do a few, Ann. We'll just do a few. Did I have a tomato overboard? A few jalapeno peppers there. On mine, I do extra. So there you go, the ultimate nachos in my book. I like it with a melty cheese sauce, lots of uh, taco meat, and then lots of the fixings on top.